There we go. Here I am. First seeing light. Solo. Sun's thinking about coming up. I'm doing what I love to do. I think it's Friday morning. See if I can get a practice fish in for my friend coming tomorrow from the YouTube channel. Let's see if there's any salmon in here. Figure this out ahead of time. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, here I am on the ocean. Where am I? Floating aimlessly around in Barkley Sound. <laughs> Flat water. Unfortunately, it's received a message that my guests can't make it tomorrow. It sucks, apparently. Apparently there's some glitch in the airport or something today. Chaos around the globe, I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue about that, but I guess I'm going to find out. Anyway, I don't know what to do now. So, put my feet up here. Sit here. Let's see what I got. Let's see what I got to be shared. What do we have? It's a bunch of screenshots in here. I think we got some uh, some comments. Here we go. Let's see if I can do this smoothly. What do you think? Please? Question mark. Mid eighties. We had an unusual experience. However, that's not why I'm writing you. About a year and a half ago, I heard three whoops just past 11 p.m. from the southeast and three answering calls from the northwest. Last fall, I went outside just about dark and was uneasy about a series of unusual howls slash screams. Came inside pretty quickly. Tonight, we went out for a quick supper and upon returning home, there was a pungent smell of wet dog Kind of like wet dog that is in badly need of a bath. On the f in the front hall that penetrated partway into the kitchen. Oh, that's creepy. Here today, all stations, all stations. This is Friendship for Traffic. Friendship for Traffic. Safety vessel transit broadcast for one. Turn the radio off. Hold on a minute. There is a pungent smell of wet dog, kind of like wet dog that is badly need of a bath, in the front hall that penetrated partway into the kitchen. The odor was apparent at the far end of the kitchen, also near the top of the basement stairs and throughout the second floor. We have cats in residence, and although it's possible one might have had an accident, it would be a new occurrence since all of them are clean and the litter pans are scooped twice a day and we're done just before we left tonight. The scent is not like cat odor, which is sharper like pine mixed with ammonia. There is no hint of the odor when we left to go out. I'm spooked because I've been hearing a call that sounds like a mix of an owl and a loon. It's unusual to hear an owl call here at, at all, but it does occur either at night or just before daylight. My husband is all but deaf and can't hear it. He did search for the source of a possible cat accident, which we haven't located, and there seems to be no specific source. Never encountered that smell before, and it did not, and does not appear, appear to be outside at all. Wow. Well, I don't know if that's related to what we got going on here with a lot of people. Uh... I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't think we've ever had anyone um, make note that something was going on inside their house with that disgusting odor. 
I just keep, I guess, just keep, uh, just keep taking note of the signs, right? And uh, the, the knowledge that you learn here and apply it to whatever you're seeing or witnessing there. And then uh, take it from there, right? Wow, I hope nobody's there, nothing is going into your home. That wouldn't be too cool. Here's another comment. I could listen listen to hours on end of your personal stories, man. I know you don't have near enough time in the day, but I'm calling a vote right now. Start each episode off with a crazy story from your past, then we get into hearing the people. What do you say, all of you? <laughs> I don't know if you want to hear some of my crazy past stories. You probably all vote that I should be in jail. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I might... I might might be alarming for some. It's definitely a wild child. Here's another. Here's another uh, comment screenshot. My second wife works for Wyoming Game and Fish. We were in the army together and went on leave to camp in the Gila National Forest when we were in Fort Bliss, Texas. We set up our camp near Wall Lake, New Mexico, in 1988. I'm guessing. We were warned about a big bear bothering the campers that night. We had our dogs, two huskies, and a Doberman. Yeah, they chased something away during the night. We had breakfast, did some fishing, and we went for a walk up a dry stream. And a rock suddenly slammed the earth beside us, and another one. I thought it was an escaped orangutan, and we were, and we were both army soldiers on vacation. I was an old country boy, so I threw a rock back and hit him. Never throw the rocks back, I say now. It makes a Bigfoot angry. Well, after that, it all goes classified with the government. Well, the government showed up with guns. The next Bigfoot I saw, I merely watched. It was peaceful. A teenage Bigfoot just eating acorns. And on a military post that I won't mention. I always heard the government signed a peace treaty with Sasquatch to let them reside on federal lands. I like filming the search for Bigfoot, and I don't feel I need to prove they exist. People just hunt them. Love the video. You threw a rock and hit one? I'd love to hear about that more detailed experience. What'd you throw? What'd you throw the rock at? What it looked like? What was what even? How'd that? How'd it go down? And what was your reaction? Crazy. What else do we got? Let me scroll up here. I think that may be it. What's this one? Uh, this may have been shared. Hello, How to Hunt Table family, Round Table family. I'm writing to ask you all, please take a moment to pray for my dear friend Diane Howard. She's in the hospital in Vista, California, with pneumonia, and she's also on dialysis as a result of being prescribed a RX that she didn't even need. That caused a horrible reaction, resulting in her kidneys shutting down. Oh, that sucks. I've seen the amazing results of the prayers from this huge family of ours. It is so powerful. Thank you, Steve, for reading this. I know this is not this is not subject you have made this channel for. It's just that I don't know what know what else to do. I was sitting by her bedside, feeling helpless when it came to me. Ask for prayers. Thanks to everyone here, sincerely and from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Jean Labar. Share Gene, I mean, there's going to be a shit pile of people praying right about now, guarantee it. I hope it's not too late, I hope it helps. What else do we got? Okay, that one was red, I think I'm caught up in the little screenshots here. I think. Alright, let's get in the notes. Let's get into the notes and see who is next here. All right, Mark, this is red. Original email read on YouTube video, RE. Follow up with photos taken July 3rd, 2024, RE. Terrifying experience in the Sierras in 2005. Later experiences were not. Steve, this is the YouTube video that you read my original email from, starting at about 8.23 minutes. Thanks, Scott. 
All right, so the title of the video is, It Was Doing 50 Miles Per Hour Looking in the Window. Hi, Steve, this is a follow-up to, to my email from March 14th, 2024. Yesterday, I was able to ride up to the area where my 2014 experience happened to take some photos. I'm pasting in my original email. In 2014, I was at high elevation above tree line at over 12,000 feet elevation on my quad. I stopped and hiked to an overlook and stood for several minutes looking at the lakes and scenery below. When I returned to my quad, I had an impression of several Sasquatches big with black fur in a lake beyond a berm to my right and one was just looking at me. But this was in my mind. Another what the F moment. I wanted to walk over and have a look, but I thought it may not be a good idea. So I got on my quad and left. Again, no negative experiences, but had me wondering what in the hell is going on in the future when I'm on another, in the future when I'm with another ATVer, I plan to see if in fact there is a lake beyond the berm or rise. I wonder what the description is of exactly what you were, you were seeing in your mind. Detailed. July 3rd, 2024. I hiked to the top of the berm. Oh, here we go. About a half mile from my quad, and there was a small lake at the bottom of the snowpack. I've attached several photos to show this. I have to seriously wonder what is going on. About March 23rd, someone wrote in saying that they were doing meditation and had a connection with a Sasquatch. Since 2003, I have periodically meditated. The meditation I did was specifically for job-related stress reduction. So I wonder if this could have put me in a position to have, an ex to have experienced this event. Excuse me. The more I delve into this topic, the less I know or can comprehend this is, as this is very bizarre. For decades I thought this may have been, as stated by researchers, a gigantopithecus remnant or relic hominid, but now I don't think so. Like you, I just like the truth. I think I can handle it at 65 years old. Did not sleep well last night, thanks Scott. I'm going to be very busy, but if you have any questions, hit reply and I'll provide contact information. Crazy. Um, here's another email attached. Um, okay, hold on. So it's gonna be, this is the original email, right? From March 14th. Let's see what we got. Thanks to you for all you're doing to get this information out to us. I spent all my vacations in the last 30 years in the Sierra Mountains hunting, fishing, hiking, dirt biking, and quad. In 2005, I was deer hunting alone in the high Sierra of Central California. I don't see anything at high elevation that morning, so I decided to head down the mountain to try a different area. As I was driving on the fire road to my left and down the mountain, I could see several deer coming up the mountain, so I pulled over and parked my truck. I got out and walked about 25 yards from my truck and saw a spike back, a spike buck in a stand of trees about 100 yards up the fire road. I just observed the spike buck in my scope as I would not take a spike, and all of a sudden, Something very large, dark and fast crossed my field of vision and I was filled with a terrible fear and going to die dread. And in my head, I got a leave now impression slash message. I said to myself, I gotta get the F out of here. And as I turned to my right, my left boot hit my right boot and I stumbled on a fall and quickly walked to my truck kind of shaken and I left. It took me three years to get up the courage to go back up there. I kept going over this incident in my head daily for years, trying to figure out what happened. I got the courage to go back up there in 2008 without incident. In 2009, I got a buck tag for the area, hunted without any issues, but on my last day heading back at sunset, a good sized doe ran as if being chased. There's nothing in pursuit. In 2012, I was quadding at elevation and worked my way through some huge boulders into a meadow that was brushy and had groups of trees. I stopped and looked around, then got an impression of a large, light brown, hairy being laying back on its elbows in the brush with legs slightly bent. It had the build of a basketball player, thin and lanky, not what I had heard a Sasquatch looks like. I looked around but did not see anything. 
but you could have hiked to the summit of the mountain from this meadow. I decided I should leave, but did not have any negative experiences. The only thing I wondered was, what the F am I losing my mind? In 2014, I was at high elevation above tree line. Okay, that's the one we just read, right? Yes, that's the one. Okay. In 2022, getting ready to head up to one of the Sierra passes on my quad, I loaded my gear and the last thing I did was grab my grab and load my 357 with hollow points. As I put the gun in my rear rack bag on my quad, I got sick to my stomach and had pain in my head and thought, am I having a heart attack or a medical issue? As I was 63 at the time, I then remembered what you said you do and state it out loud, I come in peace. This gun is protect me from cougar or bear when I go hiking. Please do not hurt me and I don't want to hurt you. I come in peace. I breathed for a couple minutes and decided I would try riding slowly. And if it didn't go away, I'd go to the hospital 60 miles away. After riding for five to 10 minutes, I felt fine. And I was thinking, is it possible I could have been exposed to infrasound? Since 2005, I've read multiple Bigfoot books and was finally able to attend a conference in Montana in October 23. I had the luck to sit at dinner with a well-known incredible Bigfoot researcher that I, just, that I described my 2005 experience to and told him the exact location where I've been hunting and his response was, oh yeah, they're up there, meaning Sasquatch. But neither he or his hunting buddies had ever had a terrifying fear of dread fear and sorry had ever had a terrifying fear and dread or a leave now experience you had asked in one of your videos why tell your story now i recently read two of scott carpenter's books and found them disturbing the information shared on your channels and your book on pages 117 171 and 294 provided some insight into this topic but it is also disturbing for years after the 2005 experience, I just did not know what to think. You cannot talk to people about this subject as they think you're nuts. I have thought about getting hypnotized and will advise if you if I do. I also cannot find your channel on Rumble. Thanks again, Steve. Hit reply if you have any questions. If you're ever in Southern California, I'd love to meet you for a beer, coffee, or lunch, or dinner. Scott. Holy shit, Scott. Sounds like you're trying to dig. There's no photos attached to this in the notes. You're digging. I hope you get the answers you're seeking. I'm pretty sure this channel's going to help you out with a bunch of knowledge, right? Oops, where am I? Nowhere near shore. I'm safe. Thanks for sending that in, man. Appreciate it. Give us an update, too, would you? When you get a chance. What do we got here? Number five, no, number five, is titled Red, Growing Up in West Virginia, and I just titled as Red. Didn't I? Yeah, I did. Hey, Steve, first and foremost, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. Keep sharing and bringing the truth to the people. It's truly amazing how much in our society is lies and fakery. It's astounding when you know that most sheep don't even care to seek or understand the truth about government, health care, money systems, and the world around us. Anyway, here's some of my experiences that make me a believer that the official narrative has some holes in it. A lot of holes. I grew up in southern West Virginia. My parents' house was in the holler that backed up to the woods. A holler is basically the bottom point or valley between surrounding mountains. One of our neighbors up on the mountain had a poor suffering dog named Zoe. My mother always had a special place in her heart for animals, and she couldn't stand to see any suffer. The no-count trashy neighbors rarely fed that poor dog, so every night my mom would set out our leftovers for the pup. One summer night in the early 90s, when I was in my preteen years, she asked me to take the leftovers out for Zoe. It was already dark by the time dinner was cleaned up, so I flicked the back porch light on and walked out with a tin of leftovers porch light was an old dimly lit incandescent bulb that couldn't spread light much beyond the four foot wide by six foot wide long porch my dad had thrown on the back side of the house as was my custom i walked into the 
dark tree covered backyard just a few feet off the porch and yelled Zoe as I dumped the leftovers in a pile for the dog. As she stayed for a minute, rubbed her noggin while she chowed down on whatever mom had put together for us for dinner. But this night, however, Zoe wasn't anywhere to be seen. I yelled again, and then I heard something up the mountain in the woods coming toward me at a brisk pace. Leaves and sticks were crunching, and I could hear the brush in the woods rustling as whatever it was moved towards the house. Zoe wasn't a huge dog. She was some mutt that the neighbor had picked up as a puppy. She was black and white with long hair, usually matted with woody debris. Debris, sorry. <laughs> I know, I, I know that from the sounds rushing me, that whatever was out there was way bigger than Zoe. I could see a black silhouette that appeared large and taller, not at all like a dog. It was making a heck of a racket, and I knew I didn't want to be there when it arrived. I spun around, ran across the porch, and slammed the door behind me, feeling, feeling like whatever was coming from the woods was hot on my tail. I turned, locked the door, and peeked out the blinds on the window. But nothing could be seen within view of the light. The, left, the leftover still sitting on the grass, untouched. Zoe didn't emerge from the woods to get her nightly meal, and neither did anything else. If it had been her, she would have been sitting there eating when I peeked out. I never saw Zoe that night at all. Growing up on the hall, it was common occurrence to see black bears walking around down our road. And I know they were, they were about. But what are the chances that yelling out for a dog would summon a bear to run towards you? It doesn't seem like a bear or other wild animal, animal behavior, but maybe it's possible. Whatever I saw and heard didn't seem like a bear or a dog either. It was erect and moving quickly like a person running at me. I stayed watching out the back window long enough that my dad came looking for me and wanted to know what I was doing. I told him what happened and I always thought that he just brushed it off as a kid's wild imagination. But years later, he brought it up and encouraged me to talk about it. He spent so much time in those woods after dark, but he never shared anything with me about strange occurrences out there. But Dad didn't like to talk about the oddities in his life, so it was not at all like him to encourage me to tell the story. I was truly surprised that, even, that he even remembered it at all. I had over the years tried to suppress the memory and feeling of fear that I felt that night. I had trouble convincing myself to return to the backyard after dark. I never got to have a follow-up conversation about it as he passed in 2019. That sucks. Another night around the same time frame, I was laying in bed completely asleep when I woke up suddenly staring at the ceiling. It was around 1 a.m. I lay there quietly trying to figure out what woke me up. I lay there for about 10 minutes in quiet, just listening. Then a bright bluish light shined into my window above my head onto the ceiling. I immediately thought someone was lurking outside with some type of flashlight. The window at the head of the bed where the light was coming in is about 12 feet off the ground. I knew that anyone on the ground could only see the ceiling as long as I stayed in bed and low to the ground. The light stayed shining on the ceiling for a minute or two, and it didn't move, and I was terrified. We live way out away from most civilization, and most night prowlers would have been loudly announced by dogs, or shot by roughneck hillbillies. So whoever was out there shining a light in my window was a brave, very tough, or stupid soul. Then something crazier than shining a light in my window happened. The light began to move across the ceiling. A normal person on the ground cannot have done this. The window is 12 feet off the ground, and there's a large hedge right under the window. The light continued traveling down the wall, across the window, then shined onto the stereo clock that read 1.13 a.m. exactly. It stayed shining. Sorry. It stayed shining on that clock until the numbers changed to 1.14 a.m., and then the light winked off. I never heard a single sound. I stayed under the covers, barely breathing, and scared half to death for quite a while, probably 10 minutes. I rolled out of bed and was too scared to look out the window the light came from. I creeped out of my bedroom into the living room, 
that had windows to the front side of the house. And I peeked out from behind the curtains, but I never saw a thing out there. I correlated these two stories because it seems like orbs or strange lights accompany Bigfoot sightings, so I thought that maybe they could be related. In my high school and past high school years, I used to go fishing at these three ponds, past a place called Fire Co., West Virginia. This is down an old railroad track that went through the deep woods. We can drive right down the old cinder pass because the railroad tracks have been removed a long time ago. The ponds were created by beavers damming up the creek, and it was great bass fishing. Many time we would hear wood knocks and hear things moving in the woods, but we never saw anything. We never stayed past dark because it wasn't safe to be that far out in those parts after dark for many reasons. I never felt fear out there, just the pure enjoyment of being in the woods and relaxing while fishing. Good times. Thanks for reading my experiences. I know they are tame compared to others, but I have no doubt that the things aren't quite as we have been told. Keep the truth coming. Sincerely, West Virginia girl. Oh, I'll keep it coming as long as everybody keeps sending it in. There's a lot of shit going on in that state, as there is in every other state and province. Mmm. The bright lights. Okay, what's this one? Okay, read this one. Why is it in here twice? Somebody sent it twice, that's why. Holy, this one's a book, I think. All right, I'm going in. What else am I gonna do? I got quite a while to go till I hit rocks. <laughs> I'm just drifting. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, you start off with your name, but you don't say I can use your name, so I'm just not going to do it till the end, maybe, to make sure, because a lot of people do this. Hey, Steve, this is blank blank. I originally sent this email on June 5th, 2021, rewriting this and going to try to make it shorter. You've already read a few other emails from me. My thought on wind for sound, my thoughts about Edgar's experience, and my first sighting of one of these forest people in 1978 at the age of 14. You also read an email I sent after this one about me having a conversation with some of the forest people, but had me confused with someone who lives in BC and I live in Colorado. Oh, no shit. In 2000, I moved to Colorado, where I'm now, where I am now. In 2008, I went out after one of the first snowstorms of the season to look to see what kind of animal tracks I could find in the fresh snow. Now, as I'm following this trail in the woods, just at dusk, I'm finding all the usual tracks. Deer, elk, bobcat, fox, coyote, rabbits, squirrels, and what I thought was a pine marten. Then I suddenly came upon these 18-inch long, barefoot, human-looking tracks coming from across this creek, crossing the trail and back into the woods. I followed them for about 100 yards to where they went up to a 12-foot tall boulder with a flat face and stopped. Then they went back toward the trail and across the trail and the creek just past where I had originally picked them up. The tracks were at least a day old, laid down just after the snowstorm the previous night. I made that made a little nervous and I immediately left the area as it was getting dark. While thinking about these tracks, I found the memory of my first encounter with that Sasquatch in 1978 come flooding back into my mind. This memory had been suppressed for those 30 years. Wow. You're not the only one who said that. After this, I started trying to find out everything I could about these beings, and I found some very good videos of them from here in Colorado that are compared to the Patterson film, but now those have disappeared for some reason. My next encounter was in January 2010. I was cutting trees for the power company. We were working at this lake resort next to the National Forest at one of the wilderness areas. This place had been closed for a couple of years as it was changing ownership. One morning, as we were driving into the resort, I noticed tracks going from the road toward the lake in one of the campsites. These were once again 18 inch tracks, except all the tracks, over 100, had rounded toe area as in wearing moccasins. 
the tracks are pretty fresh from the night before. And this is only about three inches of snow on top of the sand, so the tracks are very crisp. The mid tarsal break on the foot was visible in each of the tracks, almost making it look like a boot print. This turned out to be my first and last time reporting any of my encounters to the BF blah blah O. I found out about them and submitted my sighting report about these tracks. The investigator from there didn't get back with me until five days later. I met with him and then took him out to where these tracks were. By that time, the tracks had melted out considerably. His analysis was that they were man-made, and the report was never posted on their website. Well, I measured those tracks when I had found them at 18 inches long, with a step of 54 inches from heel to heel. That would give a stride of 9 feet, measured from heel of one foot to the heel, the sum of the same foot on his next stride. The day I found these tracks, I took pictures of them with the cheap flip phone I had at the time. Then went and bought a digital camera that night, and the next day I was taking pictures of these rock formations in a cave I saw across the lake. Three weeks after that, I was playing with the camera and realized I could enlarge the pictures on the camera. Excuse me. I found out that there was a Sasquatch standing just outside of the cave I had taken the picture of. And I still have that picture. Uh, no longer have the flip phone with the track pictures. After finding these tracks, I decided to go back to where I'd found the tracks in 08 and found more there. I ended up following some 14 inch tracks for over a quarter of a mile. In 2011, I was helping with, with the tracking after a couple of local ladies had a sighting right outside town here. And that sighting brought the Finding Bigfoot team. I thought they were called Not Finding Bigfoot. <laughs> were they called Finding Nothing? Whatever. To that area to do a show. During the town hall meeting for the show, I was listening to all the other people tell their stories and decided to tell mine. Even though I had not signed the waiver to be on TV, I talked for about 10 minutes about the things I had seen around that area and even had my camera hooked up to a computer and showed the photo I had taken. Needless to say, none of that was on the Finding Bigfoot episode when it came out. The next night after the town hall meeting, I was on a search and rescue call for some lost hikers. During that mission, I had a sighting from only 10 feet away of a very large Sasquatch with biceps bigger than my thigh. I only saw his left shoulder and arm as he was ducking into some willows as I turned my light toward him. He was jet black in color, with kind of a short hair on his arm and shoulder. He was standing in a creek that was at least three feet lower than the trail I was on, and his shoulder was the same height as mine. The next day I was contacted by that fat sleaze bag who wanted me to take him out to one of the places I'd seen tracks. They had not found anything themselves. I told him that I had an actual sighting of one of these Sasquatch the previous night, and he offered to take them and offered to take them up to where that happened. They did not want to go that far into the wilderness. No doubt. Sorry, I lost my spot. Boat going by. They did not want to go that far into the wilderness. It was six miles in. Instead, I took him and his crew out to the lake resort where I had found the tracks in 2010. I left them and I went and camped about three miles up the road. And I heard a Sasquatch as soon as I got my camp set up and found a nice structure in that area. It was even gifted a very nice piece of smoky, smoky quartz left on the structure the next morning. I could hear the Finding Bigfoot crew and that idiot screaming in the woods from where I camped. After this, I started trying to mind-speak with the forest people, and I would reach out to them with my mind. I went out on search and rescue missions and asked them to help locate people who were lost or missing, or to watch over some of the people we were going to rescue until we could get there. But I never, ex I never expected any kind of a reply back. On one mission for a hiker who got separated from his group and was out in the blizzard all night, I asked them if they could keep an eye out for this guy and maybe guide him back to his friends or to one of us I was searching. I immediately got a reply back saying, okay, we can do that. No shit. That was my first experience with receiving MindSpeak from them. 
Since then, I've experienced it many times, both them talking directly to me, or on occasions, me overhearing one of them speaking to another. Crazy. In 2013, I had a sighting of a juvenile, and have now seen him three times. He's now a teen. He was less than five feet tall the first time I saw him. Was on the same trail, and within a couple hundred yards of where I'd seen the big one in 2011. I heard this female voice in my mind saying, please don't come any further. Our little ones are out here. I turned around and walked no more than a hundred feet. Then this juvenile male ran out from between the branches and the root ball of a fallen tree. He ran up the hill pretty fast. He also had short jet black hair and was very skinny. All I saw was from his waist down because of the tree branches. Got up to the fallen tree and noticed a cow elk grazing in a small meadow, and this juvenile Sasquatch had been stalking and watching the elk. I'd already had a mind speak conversation with this juvenile's father, who was the big one I'd seen before. He talked mostly about his family and how they had been in the same area for many generations, and I asked him later about your question, Steve, of who they're afraid of and who was hunting them. And his response was, quote, we have been hunted by men since the beginning and are still hunted by them. This is why we hide. Pretty general answer, but that's what he said. May 4th, live sighting, or 5th, if I could include the photo I took in 2010, was one who I have also talked to. Encountered him while hiking in the wilderness. I heard him walking up to my camp one morning. I was in a cold camp using a military poncho as a low lean-to shelter. He didn't know, know I was there until he was right beside my shelter. And I rolled over to try to look at him and he heard me and ran. He apparently followed me back home. A couple of nights later he showed up and decided to rock my motorhome in the middle of the night to let me know he was there. He also took the lid off of a metal garbage can my landlord kept dog food in and ate about four inches of dog food out of it and put the lid back on it. Heard that move and maneuver a few times, eating dog food. I lived in the motorhome on a 60 acre property bordering, or bordering the wilderness. I heard this one and another one talking to each other on a couple of occasions with what sounded like the samurai chatter the others have described. Got to see him one day as I was walking, working on my truck. He was sitting up on the other side of the hill above me, watching me. He is also jet black and big, but he's also very big in the waist and belly, which I hear is unusual for them. Most of the time, they are described as muscular, and this was in 2014. My next sighting note happened until 2019. I was in Texas again and saw one that I'm sure was a young one inside the... Hagerman Wildlife Refuge in North Texas. It was watching me from across a creek. Every time I'd look over at it, it would wave. It would, sorry, it would move lower behind the mound of grass it was watching me from. It seemed to always know when they're around or even when I can't see them. So he was easy to spot. I think he was surprised when he realized I knew he was there. I looked up at some geese flying over and back and he was gone. I had a few encounters out there, mostly tree knocks and howling. I had a psychic encounter with a couple of females while I was in Texas the last time. Since, I'm back, since I've been back in Colorado, August of last year, I've had well over a dozen encounters with the Sasquatch slash Sabe people. I had close interactions with nine different individuals within a two week period. Eight of these Sasquatch came right up to my camp. Two of them spent spent the two, sorry, two of them spent the night, two nights in a row, within 15 to 20 yards of my tent as they were babysitting me. Wow, this sounds like a lot, man. Had one that was not so nice. It hit me twice from a distance with infrasound slash thought energy, trying to intimidate me. Found out later after asking why. The two were camped next to me those two nights that this one and others from his group wanted to take me. Still did not know what he intended to do with me if he had taken me. I found out since then why he was angry with us humans. Apparently his mate was killed, shot by one of us. I sent you an 
email about my first conversation with him. Basically, one side telling me to go away. I've had a couple of, of more conversations since then. The juvenile I saw in 2013 was seen again two more times. I saw him one night when I was sitting in my car at the trailhead. He's walking through a grove of aspen trees going toward the parking area just before dark. I immediately asked that he was... I immediately realized that he was the same one. Though he is now about six and a half feet tall and not as skinny as he was before. Right after it got dark, he started throwing pine cones at my windshield while I was in the car. Then threw rocks at a sign near my car, acting like a normal teenager. Seen him one more time crossing the road that leads, that leads to this trailhead. I have encountered another group of them on the other side of the wilderness now, and have seen one adult male from that group twice now in nearly the same spot, and one juvenile. I got a picture of the juvenile, but it is not a great picture. To date, I've had over 30 different encounters with maybe 16 to 17 different Sasquatch Sabe. have had 11 actual sightings with 8 individuals. can count about a dozen incidents of mine speak with them, and recently found that some of the ones I've spoken to have attached themselves to me and seem to want to speak to me anytime I'm doing anything interesting to them. Thanks again, Steve. Not sure if all this will help anyone, but there were quite a few people who asked me to share my stories after that first email of mine that you read. I have a friend that sent you an email last summer as well about seeing one cloaked and another sighting near the local gun range. Probably got lost like mine in your old phone. You can delete my other email. Take care and God bless. Dennis Summers. Holy shit, that's probably, you're probably the... I mean, I don't know you. I don't know if this is all true. Sounds like quite... That's a lot of shit to make up, right? And why somebody do that, I haven't a frickin' clue myself. You don't get any prizes for sharing an email here, right? But that is a lot. That is a lot. What do you guys think of that one? Take from what you will or leave it, I guess. I wonder the conversations you allegedly have with these people, is it smooth talking back and forth? Do you just get images in your head or do you get the odd sentence? Have you ever experienced, I'm curious, have you ever experienced actually having a smooth conversation back and forth, matter of fact talking, like to your neighbor over the fence? That has not been, I don't think too many people have said, yeah, they have when I ask that question. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen uh, glowing eyes? I wonder what else they may have shared with you about who is dangerous, who the bad guys are, where they may be coming from. I can, if I mean, if anybody out there is in contact with people on this level, I could have, I probably have a whole book of questions I could drop. That's a lot. Holy. Wow. Well, do I keep going? Email us back if you got if you got some information you feel that people can learn from. Some very important information. We we would love to hear it. We would love to hear it all. Now it's starting a little windy, and I'm not sure if the winds look at the camera or not. I wonder if I should get ripping into the shore and decide what I'm going to do. But I'll get one more shirt first. How's that sound? This is titled Greetings from the UK. A lot of stickers are gone in the UK. A lot. Isn't that crazy? Sarah's stickers. Hi, Steve. Happy for you to use my first name. My name is Kate and I live in the UK. I'm in my early 50s. I've listened to your channel for the last two years and I'm fully aware mainstream knows is total BS and government controlled, so I stopped paying attention to that a few years back. Good for you. I listened to your channel due to a, due to a general fascination and to also take the edge off my dreary weekend household chores, lol. Although I've never seen one of the forest people, I've always had an interest. 
fascination with Sasquatch. My gut has always told me that they are real. They're real. As a kid growing up in the early 70s, I used to have recurring dreams almost nightly about what I now believe to be a Sasquatch. From as young as three years old. I know this because of the bedroom I was sleeping in at the time and the fact that I was sharing a room with my sister who was older than me. Our dreams have always been a puzzle to me as I remember them so vividly. And I've always felt there was a reason and importance why I remember them so well. It was an aspect of the dreams that didn't make sense. Then today, when listening to your channel, I heard something that struck a chord with my memory of these dreams. In one of your recent episodes, you mentioned a time during World War II when a local tribe in Alaska believed the sound of an air raid siren was the sound of a Sasquatch. My reoccurring dreams are always me as a small child in the forest and having and hearing a very loud air raid siren following a feeling of complete terror and having to hide from the huge hairy monsters and keeping my eyes tightly closed and keeping very still while hiding. These dreams lasted until my early teens. I have no idea what this all means. Maybe a mere memory from past life. I have no idea but often wondered what a hypnotic regression session would uncover, but I'm not sure I want to stir up anything and potentially mess with my head that I might live to regret, lol. You know what? One thing to do there is contact people who have done it and see what the results were for them. Right? So I've got a few people um, who are looking to do that themselves. I don't think it's a bad thing. I've always loved the outdoors and feel very blessed to live in rural connection in, in rural central UK, which feels very safe to walk alone, which I sometimes do. But I am cautious and aware of my surroundings whilst walking, and listening to my gut has served me very well over the years. I've discussed this sabe topic with my partner, and the fact thousands upon thousands of people have seen these people of the forest, and even just thinking about the laws of averages tells me they can't all be lying. But what I can say, his brain is 110% closed. And I guess some people's brains are just like that with this subject. It puzzles me, though, how he does believe in ghosts due to an encounter in his teens. Well, I've had numerous 1 a.m. gin-fueled conversations with him on the subject where we have had to agree to disagree on the topic of Sabe in order to get some sleep. <laughs> no shit. I have no desire to see a Sabe, but I do feel more mentally prepared if I ever did see one, and feel I would know how to handle the situation thanks to your channel. Well, that's good news. There's another reason why I believe in the existence of other subjects outside of what our mainstream, mainstream public world tries to dictate to us as truth, and this is something I haven't told many people, as it makes me feel incredibly emotional to talk about. Back in early 2002, I was 30 years old and mentally in a very bad place. To quickly backfill my situation for context, I've been happily married in a relationship for the whole of my adult life and was on holiday with my husband, a newborn first child. We were a nine hour drive from home. That night I received a text message that changed the course of my life. The text confirmed my husband's affair with another woman. Well, that sucks. That night I experienced deep pain, shock, and trauma which affected me mentally and physically for a long time. After receiving the text that evening, I had to seek help from a doctor to stop the physical symptoms of sickness and bowel sensitivity that I was unable to control naturally. That's shitty. That evening I went to bed totally broken and lost, unable to even bolt home to my wider family to seek their support due to my remote location and having my young son with me. I was unable to eat or sleep, but I remember something my sister once said to me. She was always a very spiritual person. She once said to me, if you ever find yourself in a bad place, pray to your guardian angel and ask for their help. That night I remember sobbing alone and asking my guardian angel for help and to give me strength to get me through this painful time and help me to have the physical strength to continue to care for my son. And almost instantly, I felt a very fuzzy, intense, and peaceful, almost like bright sunshine, warm glow, 
radiate through the whole of my mind and body and lasted what I felt like a very long time. In fact, it sent me to sleep. I remember I couldn't see an angel. I just felt their love and presence and total peace. Well, that's interesting. And that's a good tip for people. In case anyone was wondering, the doctor only given me an injection to settle my stomach and nothing mind-altering in any way. The next day I woke up and although still feeling hurt, bewildered, I felt I had strength to carry on and do what I needed to do to get through my each day and to care for my son. Fast forward 20 years following divorce, determination, hard work, and years of healing, family, love, and friends, I'm in a fantastic place with an amazing, loyal, loving partner in three years. The proud mother of 20-year-old kind, considerate, hardworking, caring, and also determined son, just heading off to year three university with a bright future ahead of him. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not been easy emotionally or financially, but 100%, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Given my guardian angel encounter, I have no fear of death or the next life. Much love to you and Sarah, and thank you for helping others to share their experiences in a safe place. Stay safe. Love from the UK. Plus, there are a number of other UK-based truth-telling YouTube channels on the subject of politicians and the arm juice that was inflicted on us all. The evidence back data, too. Any interest, interested readers should check out Dr. John Campbell on YouTube for further truths. Numerous episodes on embalmers across the world unable to inject embalming fluid into deceased relatives due to unusually blocked arteries. That are no, that are no new phenomena since the rollout of the juice. All right, there you go. End of email. Anybody else have a guardian angel experience? I'm quite sure a lot of people do. I, I definitely have a handful. Do I know who it is? <laughs> no. Do I believe in guardian angels? You can call them whatever you want. I do believe something's going on. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, I don't fear death either. 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 That's some unfortunate news actually recently. Off topic, but it's on my mind. A friend of mine just died, found out. It kinda sucks. I don't know how long everybody listening today has been here on the channel, but you may have remembered before I mentioned a group of elite hunters. A small group of guys, very private guys, who really got at it. Like they would go miles in the middle of frickin' nowhere and would only harvest the true monstrous old rare specimen of the elk or mule deer, whatever they're hunting, and they had some monster animals, those guys. They're very disciplined at allowing younger animals to go, etc. And uh, we were both on the same hunting forum a long time ago, and made contact there and stayed in touch. Very kind, helpful man. He helped a lot of people, helped a lot of young people in the outdoors. Just helped people all the time. Financially very secure, had nothing to prove, or didn't need anything that way. And he questioned me a few times on this topic. I said, really, man, you really believe in this? And I'm like, didn't make it up. I've seen one. Can't change my story. Sorry. And he never had too much curiosity about the topic. And then a couple of years later, after we had that discussion, he let me know that one of their group, their small group of guys, and they all laughed at the topic, had a face-to-face -face experience. And then uh, the trash to screwed right up. Stopped talking to all those guys. Got rid of his hunting stuff, doesn't go in the woods anymore, didn't want to talk to me about it. Turned it a bit of a recluse. But anyways, that is the friend of mine that just passed away, Dave Brown. What a loss. Way too early, I don't know how he died yet, but anyway. There you go, you guys. We're all dying. We're all going to get a turn, right? You have to do what you love to do as much as you can. And always remember that it can be gone tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow morning, next week. It's coming. So try not to waste any time, all right? Try not to waste any time. And whatever you do with your time, try to do something good, right? For yourself, for your partner, your friends, your family, even strangers. Try to do something good, you know? Anyway. I'm going to flash this beast up, head her into shore, eat some food. Try to find out what's going on on the planet today with everything. I don't know what's going on. I'll 
It's got the text of the cancellation of fishing tomorrow and that apparently the computers and the banking and the airports and everything's down around the globe or something. I don't know. We'll find out in a little bit. I'll try to be back tomorrow. I don't know what's going on, but I'll be back. So, you got some truth. Send to share my story. How to hunt.com. I just freed up a bunch of space and that email got plugged up again. So, uh, that email's taking the emails again. And if you would like one of Sarah's decals, decals, stickers, <laughs> the link's in the description below, alright? As well as the backup channel link, Sarah's store. I'll be back tomorrow. Try to be. I should be. Oh, have a good weekend.